Jessica, warm doggy. I just said to you, look at that smile. You remind me I need to go to the dentist. It's nasty, bro. How you been? I've been all good. How have you been, man? Oh, just trying to survive this COVID thing, bro. Look, I'm just... It is difficult. How is it difficult with you for work? No, I, I'm I'm lucky because I still get to work. Yep. You know, like. you know what I mean. Like. Um, but you know when you come down to London, you just want to go for a nice little drink or something. You can't you can't do nothing. Is it? it I mean, I imagine for work, it might even make things a little bit more difficult with the social distancing and all of that and so on and so forth. There's just the whole process of work, because you're kind of new to it. Has it kind of ruined the experience a little bit? Because you're just getting started and then yeah. when they're there. So, Super Sunday is normally, you know, like when you're at the grounds yeah. and then you've got the crowd, but you can see the crowd through the, uh, through the screen. Come on. Ways, and it's just like the atmosphere, you miss it. So when you mm. go to like the studio, the studio's good, but you don't get that same atmosphere. Same vibe, in yeah. the same energy. I always, I always like thrive off the fans. You know what I mean? So like when they're not there, you don't get that extra buzz. You know, you only got 40, 50,000 in the stadium. And it now just it's brings that atmosphere, man. Now there's a hundred people. I know, yeah. yeah you can hear everything though. Everything? Everything. You reckon that's easier for the players and for the... I think like, if some players, it's, it's, it's easier because, you know when you give the ball away in the game, mm. like the first five minutes, like, and then the crowd is sort of on you. They're the, the, the watching to see what your next pass is going to be. But when there's no one there, I know people are watching, but no one's at the ground, so it's fine. It's like minor. a training match, it's, isn't it? Exactly. You know, in training, training game, you get on the ball, easy. So you see uh, um, a few of the teams, especially Aston Villa now. Aston Villa without, without fans have been unbelievable because if you're not winning in the first 10, 15 minutes at Villa Park, the fans can turn on you. It's why I love Liverpool. Everyone has an excuse apart from them. They don't care whatever. Give us COVID, we'll play our right back, centre back. It just doesn't matter. We're just going to do our thing. Are they going to win the league? <laughs> why, why are you going quiet, man? Because it's between the two gods. The two gods? Pep and Klopp. Mm. And it's, I just think it's between them. I don't know. I watch it and I just say, I don't know what's going on. But I, I don't fall into the hype of everybody else. I love all the other teams involved. But when the adults lay down the law like Pep and Klopp, I think it'll be between them. I don't know who though. We'll get onto that. Right <laughs> yeah. now, as you can see, this says can't afford cue cards. Okay. Like, can't afford cue cards. I have to write this myself and make it. Come on. <laughs> what does this thing mean to you, though? Five days after Valentine's Day, 2006. What does that mean to you? I know what it meant to me. 2006? After... Five days after Valentine's. 2006. A week could be a pregnancy scare. Or <laughs> I don't know how mine were. But five days in 2006. Five days in 2006. Gareth was Barry was still playing football. Gareth Barry, what a legend he is. Wait, and wait. a young Micka Richards was 17 years old, standing up. And I think you might have even taken your top off. Yeah. 1-1. One, one. Villa. Come on, my brother. Yes. That's what? where it started and it ended. That's <laughs> <laughs> it didn't end very well, though. Um, yeah, that was, it was a mad moment, you know, because like, I was, I'm from, well, I was born in Birmingham, from okay. Leeds, but I was born in Birmingham. Mm. But then like, I was always quite good at corners and stuff. But then you never expect that to happen. You know what I mean? Like, cause you know the area, the areas from, from like the opportunities, they come like few and far between. So like, when I was playing, I never, that's when my life changed. You know what I mean? When I scored that goal, I swore on TV afterwards. Oh, come on, it was all lit though. I loved yeah, all of that. Yeah, I swore on TV. It was just mad. Um, what was the preparation like for that day? Because that's the moment. That's the moment that I remember seeing and Stuart Pierce talking about you and me going, who's this boy? 17 years old. Looks, he looks like he's from the ends. I love this. <laughs> but what is the, what's the story before that? What's like the day like when you find out you're starting? FA Cup, such a massive tournament. You know what? I just, when you're that young, you don't really do that much thinking. I think when like, it's the pressure, you no, know, no fear. You see me when I played then, I was mm. just fearless. Mm -hmm. I didn't care about anything. I didn't care about the press, didn't care what people said. Like I just backed my ability 100%. And Stuart Pierce was massive for me because he loved me from like, I was playing in reserve games and I was, was doing well in the reserve games. And then he was like, don't worry, son. You ready for the big time now? So I'm just like, this is- Come I'm, on. I'm, I'm, I'm gassed because he's Stuart Pierce. you know what I mean? He's a legend of the game. So then when, when he said, don't worry, you're good enough to play, he just gave me that confidence. So like for them years, and then when he, when he, when he started me, I, was, I wanted to just repay that faith because it's, 
it's, it's only often you get that manager's got that full belief. He just believed in me, like 100%. So when I was on the, on the pitch, I just felt like invincible. Was it easier? Because I was really excited by that crop of Manchester City yeah. players at the time. Yeah. I remember Mika Richards, Nicole Steven Island. Baller. You see Michael Johnson? Oh. In my eyes. I bought him all the time on Championship Manager, centre midfield, two years, player of the year. There's no arguments. <laughs> what was it like being in that whole setup as a, a, Man, City, a Man City player? Because you wasn't in it alone. You had some company. And what did you think about the young players growing up? What would, did you have conversations about you were going to achieve and so on and so forth? How did it go? Yeah, it was quite competitive because we had Nader Manua. He was, the, he was the first one really to, I won't say bust, but he was like... He was only two years older than me, but he was playing before me. Okay. Then it was Steven Island. Island was a baller. What a baller. baller. Daniel Sturridge. Daniel Sturridge. Daniel, Sturridge. Daniel Sturridge. Baller. Michael, jo Michael Johnson was the best. He was the, he, he was the one that should have been like England legend, Man legend. City legend. Because he just do things with a ball, like so simple. It was effortless. And he went, he went down a different... Uh, career path mm. because football's not for everyone I think everyone thinks you know once you're in football yeah, everyone wants to be a football but it's the other side that people don't see the, the, the mental side where you've got to be so disciplined so and what it, are the early things you saw in yourself mm -hmm. and the other Man City players the younger Man City players yeah. at the time that was maybe a difference with you in comparison to them and what differences they have in comparison to you that you might have taken and said I might need that trait. I, I, mine was just, I, I had belief in myself, I backed myself no matter what. I think it's difficult to, you say you're 18, 19, you're earning, you know what the money, 30, 40, 50 grand a week. What's that matter? It's, it's crazy, so like, crazy, and you're still, you're still growing up, you're still trying to be a man, so you're doing all these things that like 18, 19 year old would be doing, you know what I mean? And then your body's still changing, women come into the equation, Come on. Yeah, it's, it, that, that's just life. Um, but because I had a little, I think, maybe say special mindset because I'd come from not so great background where mm. I was like, you know, you're only going to get one chance at this. Don't mess it up. And so you score on your debut? No, I did well, so. In the I, FA Cup. Like, in, that's, in, that's in, in the FA Cup, Cup yeah. That, like, so, so that was just like, it was just, it was, a, it was a crazy feeling. But it was like last last minute, last kick of the game as well. I just remembered like all sorts of emotions. I just remember going and I headed it in and I just, I didn't know what to do. So I just, I just ran, I just ran, I just <laughs> ran and jumped in the crowd. I was just, I was just mad. Um, but I don't think my mindset was any special to, to any of them. I just think I had a manager who really believed in me and, and I took that chance because, you know, Daniel Sturridge, if he didn't get injured, he, you know, look at the careers, he went to Liverpool, he's one of the most underrated English strikers ever. Obviously, his, his, his fitness was a, was a problem because a lot of people say, oh, his attitude's well, nothing to do with his attitude. His attitude's spot on. It's just, he's had a bad hip from, yeah. from young, you know uh, what I mean? Like, we're talking uh, academy days. So to get to where he's got to with all the things, it's just, in incredible. And I, I love him because he carried the family name. Yeah. Dean Sturridge was before him at Derby doing his thing and he said, you know what, let me carry it on. And, yeah. and now I'm excited to see the next Sturridge, the way I'm excited to see the next Wright, um, Wright Phillips or Wright and so on and so forth. I love when people do carry their family name. Sticking with Mika Richards though, what you said, that goal changed your life. Yeah. And the reason why I love cup, 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 cup competitions back then is because you saw the young players, Arsenal used to always do yeah, it in cup yeah. competitions and United will show you some. So I'm like, who's going to make debuts in these competitions and do their thing, and that's when you get to see Mika Richards. What did change in your life from that moment? Just, just everything, because one, I swore live on TV after. <laughs> what did mommy say? <laughs> I know the she was, she was, cool, she was cussing, but that, my dad was laughing, but my <laughs> mum was like, why are you embarrassing me? I've got to go to church on Sunday. And, yeah, what, what country is Jenny from? Um, St. Kitts and Nevis, man. Oh, my St. Kitts and Nevis. Caribbean, you're Island boy. You and you're see, swearing you on know, TV. You don't know, see these waves, fam. <laughs> you see this hairline. Be careful. It goes back. <laughs> it goes back. So, yeah, my mum was, uh, was disappointed. But Jen, from then, everyone was just like, oh, who's this, this new? Because he put this pressure on his superstar. Obviously, you're playing for Man City at 17, then you move on to England at 18. Like, it all just happened too, too, too quick. You know, like some people say that, that phrase, you get too much too soon. I got too much too soon. And I, and I was still trying to be the kid 
that I wanted to be, but I couldn't because I, I had to be a professional footballer at the same time, you know what I mean? So you didn't really have space to grow up. You were 17 years old, you score this goal, life's good, all of a sudden the pressure of your ability and your belief yeah. is now given to you by everybody else. And it's like, I don't want this, I'm just doing this to play football and live my life type of thing. And now I've got all this pressure to be professional, to be an adult, and you're 18. Yeah, it, it, was, it was crazy. And then, like, I remember the, the Sun newspaper, they was always doing, like, the stories and, like, and I didn't know, I, I used to read newspapers, but not, like, religiously, like, read them. But then, like, you know, like, little bits of your personal life are getting cropped up to the... What's the first bit of what made you go, wait a minute, what's going on here? What's the first bit of uh, the, the first bit was, like, I bought a, a, an Aston Martin when I was 19. Magic, <laughs> come on, fam! <laughs> but, like... You know, like when you're young and you're black and stuff like that, they expect you to be a little bit flashy and whatnot. And I was like, sort of playing up to their stereotype a little bit. You know what I mean? But was it intentionally or was it? No, from... no, it was just it was, it was from my heart because I always loved cars. You know what I mean? But and so what did you watch when you were younger? Like, what, what, what content did you consume for you to say I love cars? I just used to watch like um, like videos on on YouTube and all that sort of thing. I, I used to love top videos, top, top Gear, top gear music video. You know what it's like? Come on, R&B. M M MTV base back in the days. Come on, My brother. That's what I mean. In I think it might have been '95. Lennox Lewis came to Ferry Lane Estate, our estate. He came to my yard in an Aston Martin. It, I didn't even know what an Aston Aston Martin, Martin was before them. <laughs> he had a CD player thing in the car. I said, "Yo." Yeah. So now you've got the Aston Martin at 19 years old. Yeah. What does the son think about that though? The the, the son just the one. Uh, I won't say change the narrative, but the one to paint this picture of, oh, here's another one, an, another young, flashy, black kid. But I enjoyed cars, you know what I mean? Yes. And I was, and I was doing it on the pitch, so it was, a, it, it was irrelevant, you know what I mean? Like, what I do in my, my private time, I'm not hurting no one, buying a nice car. But again, it's just, it was mad because further on, along down the line, and we'll come back, but it's like me and James Milner both bought Ferraris, uh, I think just after we won the league in Man City. <laughs> I, I wanna. I, I bought a red one because you have to buy Ferrari. It's red, isn't it? It's red. Yeah. He bought, he bought a, a grey one, but at the same time. But then we was going to an event. We both drove them, and then the next day I was in the, in in the, um, in the sun or a paper. I don't know if it was the sun. To be fair, I was in the paper. Like, oh look at this young flashy car, and Jay Milner's parked right behind me in the exact same car, but not a word said about him. So that's when I, I started like using my brain then, you know what I mean? Like I'm not gonna play up to that. Wherever people say, oh well, you shouldn't be changing it. Yeah, I'm, I'm true to myself, mm. but I'm not gonna give them ammunition. I'm not gonna give them what they want at that time. Exactly. So, what, so wait, 2006, yeah. you're 17, you scored the goal. Yeah. 2008 then you must have had this situation with the Sun paper or 2009 yeah. saying what they've yeah. said. Yeah. Social media is not that bad at the time as well. No, no, no. So you've just got your direct circle yes. to tell you what they think yeah. about the newspaper. Yeah. What is the talk amongst your friends and your family from that? I imagine they're quite angry and... Yeah, they just feel like, you, you know, you've been victimised a, a little bit. Um, my, dad, my dad was always like... Dad's Rasta in it, so... Is it? Yeah. Come on, my brother. <laughs> like, dad, dad's, a, dad's a Rasta. And he was just like, he was wise. He never used to tell me I can't do anything. He just used to be laid back. But he just said to me, make sure you invest in property. Do you know what I mean? So when they're giving you all this, you know, building up this paint of what, what they want you to be like, make sure you, you, you know, you're buying property. So I've been doing property since I was 18. Pardon? Yeah, I've been buying, selling, um, do developments since I was 18. But I don't, I don't talk, I don't talk about this side because I let people talk, let them talk. What I'll just do my do your team. do, you know what I mean? So how do you know? Thirty two. My brother, <laughs> come on, that looks healthy. Yeah, so um, I like to keep my stuff private, but I know it's it's difficult because when you, it's not just whether you're black or or, or not. I don't even want to make this a, a racial thing, but. When you're young, they expect you to be a certain way. And I, I've seen players lose everything, being divorced, you know, yeah. keeping up with the Joneses, buying five, six, seven cars, having the biggest house, then they can't keep up with the mortgage payments. 
then the next minute they've got nothing. All from earning amazing, because a lot of people say, oh, he's earning this much, how could he, but it's, the, it's a circle, you talk about the circle around you. Yeah. Like, you know as a black person, yeah. you, you from majority of the time, from the hood, Come you know on. what I mean, let's keep yeah, it yeah. real. Yeah. So once you make it out of that hood, like I got four sisters, three brothers. What? Four sisters, three brothers. That responsibility is mad. My, my, my mom, Where are you though? Where are you in the... So I'm like, I'm second, no, third youngest. Third youngest? Third youngest. Okay. So like, once you come out of that and you're like, you've got to deal with all of these, it's peer pressure, it's peer pressure. You got to look after your mum, mm -hmm. your dad, mm -hmm. your brothers, your mm -hmm. sisters. Then the cousins that you've grown up with, like, because I was tight with all my cousins. So, like, next minute you're giving out grand here, grand there. Before you know it, like, you've got no more money left because you, mm -hmm. you're trying to do the right thing by mm -hmm. helping everyone out. Mm -hmm. But you can't help everyone, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Then then you've got family members, like... You don't even know? They don't, they don't know, but then they say, oh, he's t why is he not doing nothing for the family? But I've got all this pressure while trying to play football, while trying to keep everyone happy, and he can't keep everyone happy. So let me get this straight. <laughs> You've got the sun chatting crap, which I expect, because yeah. they're full of shit anyway. Then you've got your family, which naturally, they're seeing now you've come into some money, you're a bit of a success. They're not fully understanding what's going on. So they're gonna go, yeah, a little 500 pound here and there before you know it. Mm -hmm. And you have to perform in front of like 60,000 people every week, otherwise they're at your neck as well. But you're like, what, 2021 at the time? That, and, that, and that's where the pressure come. Cause at 17, mm. I was on what, about 200 pound a week? That was nice. That was like, like it was, it, there's no pressure. Two you know, a week, it's calm. That's, you know, that's, that's nice, you know what I mean? Like, you're only looking after yourself. And there's no pressure then, there's no pressure. It's like, buy what you want, do what you want. I was, I was nice. I stayed in digs with a, a, a lovely family who looked after me. Everything was, was nice. But then as soon as you get that England tag, everyone always think, oh, he's on David Beckham money. Do you know what I mean? Oh. Then you come in with these pressure, then you put yourself under this mad pressure. And that's what it's just a downward spiral from, from them there. because you just you just you're worrying about too much things. You know what I mean? Then you've got agents. So I had an agent. So the first agent I had, so I did a deal mm. with, with an agent, but then my dad was representing me. Okay. So my contract had finished with this agent. Then uh, my dad did the rest of the deal. Agent sued me. What? Agent sued me because it was they said they stated that they negotiate from the start, but they didn't finish it, but they started negotiations. So my first ever big deal when I was at Man City, they took, I had to pay 250 grand in, in legal costs, and I had to pay 250 grand in settlement costs. This is before I've even made, made a penny. You, made spend, half a, you had to spend half a mil from the jump. From the jump. And that was, and that was like, but I'm glad it happened at the start and not the end. Yes. You know what I mean? Or halfway through. Uh, or halfway through. You, you know got what all mean? the badness at the start, so, so you know what so to that, do. With. So that then, like, I was like, well, actually, I need to, and, and now that's why I don't have no representation. I, so, do, I do everything myself. So today, right now, as it stands, you don't have no representation. Everything yourself. I have guys, um, Josh and Eli, who manage my diary. I don't like to call them PA, because I, 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 it's not disrespectful, but they do, more, they do more than that. But I make all my decisions. I'm not contracted with anyone. Like, it's, just, it's just me. I, I make all my, it's me. What made you make that decision? Just from, I don't know, just from experiences. Losing half a mil at the start was just, it, it was crazy, you know, like that, that sort of money you could only dream of making wow. and, it's, and it's been taken away with you before you even hurt. So I'm like... Half a mil? Half a mil is, is too much. The closest I've got to that was holding my chips, I ate half the mil and man slapped the chips out of my hand and I was like, yo, and that was 14, we're in school, it was a little game. At 18 years old, you've lost half a mil doing the dream job. Doing the dream job. And you're still here smiling? Because you got to smile, you have to smile. I, I'll always be a positive person. I can see, brother. I'll, I'll always it. be a positive person. It, so, so now, like, in, in, in the industry I'm in now, I just, I enjoy, I enjoy life, you know what I mean? I'm not going to be a certain way. I'm, I'm lucky enough to work for, for BBC and Sky and CBS. I've got a column in the mail, like, that's unbelievable. I, I did all that. 
by myself. You know what I mean? And you started off by losing half a mil. And I started, that's what I mean. Give us some of the best memories at Manchester City because we did speak about some of the exciting crop that you had at the time. Stuart Pearce was a relatively young manager. Mm -hmm. um, I only got to see the back end of his career. Um, so I've, I've watched it from like Euro 96 and then maybe some of the bad days at Nottingham Forest early on. So I didn't get to watch some of the heights of Stuart Pearce. Mm -hmm. But I got to see him as a coach. I think it was England at 21 at one yeah. point. I remember at Manchester City, he loved the young players. Yeah. So you said he was a good person to, you know, to play under. What are some of the greatest moments that you felt that you had before Stuart Pearce left? And I think Mark Hughes came in and uh, Mancini. What were some of the best moments under Stuart Pearce? Just, um, well, he, he picked me for the Olympics as well. Amazing. That was un unbelievable. Um, but him just giving me my debut, you know what I mean? I think that's underrated, but not only giving me my debut, just like backing me as well. Because you see players get like 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, and then, but he really, he put his, his neck on the line yeah. for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, we, didn't, we didn't win nothing under Stuart Pearce because at the time Man City wasn't what they are, they are now. But he, had a, he, had a, he was just, he was the best man manager I've had because he knew how to get the best out of me. Do you know what I mean? He knew I was willing to work hard and he, and he loved that about me. And although we didn't win a trophy, you know, making my debut. Without him, I, I wouldn't be here today. There's a loads of characters in that team. I think about the Rubinos. Rubin what, a, what a player. I think about Joey Barton. You know what? He's misunderstood, you know. Talk to me. Why is he misunderstood? It, it, you know because what? I don't know how you misunderstand a man that punches a <laughs> car of the Man City team as a QPR player, and that's his veterans. No, you know what? What's going on? You, you know, like, sometimes... So, you, so if we have... I don't know, if we have an argument, you, yeah. you see, you'll see, have a bad temper or whatever. Yeah. Or, it's a, or whatever, but... You only, they might only see that part of when you're having a, you know, ah. you know what I mean? So every day, mm -hmm. he works hard, he improved, because he was, at one time, he was going to get released. Like, he had to work really hard to get back uh, to where he was. Um, and he, he was real, like, leader around the dressing room. I had never had a problem with him. I mean, I love him. But, but when, when, he, when he takes it, Sometimes it takes it too far. Okay. You know what I mean? You know, like some people have got no stop button. That's like Joey Barton. Like if you're gonna have a fight, he's gonna be there till the end. You know, it's just, <laughs> it's just like you know, you know them guys that you you but fight. I've got friends like that, and I just think you got to manage them right. You just got to make sure you don't put them in that circumstance. Exactly. Yeah. He was willing to take on half the Manchester City team <laughs> like he wasn't there years before. <laughs> it's just amazing. It's just, it's just, that, that's just, it's just that, it, When that, that happened though, where was your mind at when you saw him going crazy? Yeah, because I was, I was, I was pissed, you know, to be honest, because I didn't play that game. So yeah. I played a lot of that season, but I was on the bench that game. I, I got hamstring in like four, I think about six games before. So Mancini was superstitious, so he stuck with the same team. To, I got a couple Did of minutes. Was he superstitious like that? Yeah, he was. If, if we'd won, then we'd play, we'd play the same way. And, <laughs> you know, that was it. So like, I'm, I'm, I'm on the bench, I'm pissed off. I'm like, what's going on here, man? Like. I want to be playing to, to make it worse. Zabaleta scores the first goal. The right man. So I, I'm, ju I'm, 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 I'm just like on the bench. I'm just like what? you can't what? believe. I just can't believe. But but put my emotions aside. Like we're, we're winning. I'm winning. I'm winning the Premier League. You know what I mean? Who cares if you play or not? It's a team thing. But then when Joey Barton did that, I'm just like, come on, Joey. Like what? What, what are you doing here? Like, you see, from the city, but to be fair though, but the, the problem was QPR needed to win. I know. To, to stay up, you know what I mean? So, I so the tension, you can imagine, like, we, we're, we're losing. You can see one of the fans, like, hitting the seat in the, in, in the, and that's like typical city because some certain easy games we should win. We didn't win, do you know what I mean? Make it hard for ourselves. So imagine getting it to the, to the last, last day of the season. You just need to beat QPR in a re relegation fight. Figured this is gonna be four or five nil, and they go one, they go one nil up. Do you know what I mean? You said when they got it to two one, who scored when it was two one? I remember across from the left hand side, who scored? I can't remember for the life of me, but a two one QPR. Oh QPR. Uh, oh, when they went two one up, I'm uh, saying. Mackey it, wasn't it? Mackey. Mackey. It was. A, it was a crossing. Um, and the fans just happened to from right Torrey. Do you know what I mean? What a movie. Oh what my. a movie. Do you know what? I was I didn't want to attack I didn't want to talk about this part now, but we're here. <laughs> you see at 2-1, yeah. when Mackey's made it 2-1, you already messed up because you bloody lost to us at the Emirates. Mikel Arteta, Jet Black Hair. 
And I'm thinking to myself, you don't, don't really want this league. But then United mess up against Everton. Yes. Now you're back in it. Yes. Now I'm thinking to myself, all right, cool. We're at the final day. Then man, I got to beat Sunderland. You know Alex Ferguson's team. He'll give you that. Yeah. But Mancini's just crazy. Yeah. And now it's 2-1. Mm. With about 10 minutes plus stoppage time. You're on the bench. Zabaleta scored. Where are, where's your head? Where's my that head, bench? My, where's my, everyone's my, head? My, my, my emotions are everywhere. So I'm like, not playing. Like, why am I not playing? And then Zabaleta scored. So I'm even more annoyed. But then like, they score. But then they score again. So I'm like, no. This can't, <laughs> this can't happen. Please. You know what I mean? At this point, I'm like, I'm praying to every god possible. Like, please, I just want... You know, if, if I don't win it this time, I might not get a chance to win it again. You know what I mean? I was like, it was, it was, emo it was emotional on that bench. But then Dzeko, underrated, underrated. I'm with, I'm with you there. Underrated, with you. underrated. When he, when he scored, the belief that he coming back. So I'm on the sideline. So me and Balotelli, and whatever I was more annoyed about. So say like, if I didn't play, <laughs> if like we was winning the game, it bring me on or go to five at the back, or if I was starting, it bring Zabaleta or go to five at the back. But because the game like was losing, he had to bring on offensive players. So I'm on the sideline with Balotelli, and like I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm gutted and devastated. And he just said, "Don't worry." He said something, "Don't worry, brother. When I come on, I'm gonna make a difference." In the Who game. said that? Balotelli. I love Mario. Why always Balotelli. me? Why always him? <sighs> but he went there. And I think, I think, don't quote me on this, I think this is the only assist he had while he was at Manchester City. I just got the thumbs up from T Goat. Do you know what I mean? Confirmed. 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 Confirmed? From T Goat. It's confirmed. The, confirmed. Oh, the only assist. Talk about big game players. Only assist. In your life at Man City. And, I who, and who's there to finish it off? Sergio! You know what the killer is though? You lot. I feel like both of us were shortchanged. This is gonna sound crazy. <laughs> because. I'm vexed. There's moments in life, like when DMX performed in front of a whole country and I didn't see it. I wasn't even old enough to go. Furious. Manchester City 2012. You see that energy inside that ground. I think that's unmatched in the Premier League history. I think that's that moment for energy because of what was on the line and what you were going to... I think it's unmatched. I don't think there's probably... Yeah, the Man United done it in 99, but... Well, Tim Shield was fouled on the halfway line. I'm never going to forget that, <laughs> which led to their first goal. But that moment there is the last second. It's the last kick. When Aguero scores, what is going through? What what, is, what happens to that bench? What happens to everything? I'm, what do you feel? I'm on. I just I just remember running as fast as I can. And I'm just like I, I can't believe it. You know, like it felt like you're dreaming. That's the best way to it. You know, when you're dreaming and it's just the best dream and you don't want it to end. Yes. But it was like that for about ten days. I was. I was drunk every night. If that was me and Beyonce in that dream that time, I'd have been Rihanna today. <laughs> I was drunk every night. I just, it was, uh, it was, you know, like it was, it was better for me because I'd come through the academy. Yeah. You know, I went there at what fourteen, and like stuff like this doesn't normally happen to to me. You know, like you know, you say, oh, why has that always happened to him? So you're thinking, I work, all, I work so hard. Like, why don't I get a better look? Next minute, 2008, they get the, the takeover. Shape months, I'm thinking. Ooh, I wanted to talk about the yeah, takeover yeah. because I remember when Jay Z dropped the takeover. Yeah, it was a mad thing. Yeah. So that takeover was crazy. So for me to be still there while the takeover's happening and then be a part of the Premier League, like, honestly, it was just. Words can't describe. It was like, it was like going to heaven. If there is a heaven. Oh, there is. Well, I believe in God, but yeah, there it's is. like... <laughs> this isn't hell, this is that little in-between. But what's this? This is a conversation. <laughs> and then after the conversation, we have a discussion. You either go heaven or hell. Unbelievable. It was oh, just... It, I don't know, it's like the best news. You know, like, and a lot of people say, oh, yeah, footballers get paid a lot of money, but they get a lot of money. Yeah, that, that's irrelevant. It's about that, that moment, that feeling, the best feeling. Ever. You never replace it. No amount of money could replace that. So the takeover was worth it then, isn't it? The takeover was just but it's not just a takeover. Look what they've done to Manchester. Rejuvenated the whole the whole place. So many jobs, so many opportunities. They've got City have got like I think eight clubs now all over the world. They're just taking over. And to be a part of that. I'm a Manchester City ambassador as well, so 
Serious? Yeah, I've been to, I went to Nigeria last year. Or was it the year before? Australia, went to LA, do all these things. Bring Rep- me? Represent. <laughs> LA at least, come on, fam, you know my team. LA was real good as well, you know. <laughs> well, brother, come on. Now look. I know I haven't got much time with you, and I was still there's still things at Man City I really wanted to talk yeah, about. Yeah, but go on, go on. we'll move on to now. We'll move on to our next part in the cue cards. <laughs> you can't even got my name on there. No, no, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> it's not about you, fam. <laughs> <laughs> You're here. After this, you gotta go. <laughs> Visiting us in '98. I remember a man scoring a hat trick against Jamaica. In '98. Yes, I was very upset. This man played for a team that you went on to represent. Fiorentina. Oh, Fiorentina. How can you forget yeah, anyone's your team? And do you know why? I love who, that. Who's got the hat trick? Gabriel Batistuta. Oh, do you remember Batistuta? Batistuta, oh, them boy, Batistu, man. Batistu, man. Batistu, man. Even when Wembley and punished Arsenal. Hey, yes, Batistuta. He, he killed my Jamaica dream and my Arsenal dream. Okay. But you know, I think it's so amazing about you because you've gone through all these transitions. Gareth Barry's still playing. Yes. Joaquin is still playing. <laughs> <laughs> them boys are still playing. And you're here now. Do you do the next thing? I'm here. Talk to me about Fiorentina, man. Because it wasn't the greatest. Yeah. But you did beat Spurs. <laughs> <laughs> we beat Spurs. So, yeah, it was. I was coming towards the end at Man City mm. at the time. Zabaleta was established number one. I had come back from nine months, my knee injury. Mm-hmm. I wasn't was getting back in. You know? All through my career, I'd, I'd be playing. I was, was, that a, was that a proper hard time with the whole injury? Yeah, it, oh, it was like. It was, I, was, I was borderline depressed. Serious? Just because, like. You know, like when you're at a team and someone's played so well, and, like, you know you're not going to get your place back. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And it's just like you're playing on your mind. We talk about like so many things taking and you're taking on this now. And like, I'm in that moment, I'm just like, I'm not gonna get my place back here. He's playing too good. There was even a time where I did my hamstring injury. He did his ham in, uh, hamstring injury, and he got back before me. I'm just like, this guy is a warrior. There's no way I can dislodge him out of the team. He's just, he's, he's the man. Is like, that difficult for you? Because you said one thing that helped you throughout your whole career was your belief. And at yeah. that moment there, you didn't believe that you could be better than you. You know what? With me as well, I was realistic ah, as well. So does, belief, so does belief. And there's like, when I was, when I was 18, 19, I believed I was, there was no one better than me in, in that position. I used to say it in interviews, like, I know there's, I think there was Danny Alves, who was amazing at the time. He was mental. Amazing, incredible. But by him, I looked at it, there was Philip Lahm, but he was playing like left, left back, back, left back, little bit in midfield. So I'm thinking that this is, this is me. Macon, I seen him, he was good going forward. Michael but, Macon. But yeah, but defensively, he like, finally played with Man City, he was good. But I was thinking that like, this is all me. So I had that belief. I was like, I, I, I could defend and I could attack, I could burst forward. I was like, I've got this. But then when Zabaleta started playing well, I was like realistic thing. I'm not gonna, mm. I'm not gonna get. So I was supposed to go to Spurs. What? So I was supposed after Man City we agreeing a deal with Spurs. Last minute, Man City they didn't they didn't want to sell me to a, a, rival. a rival. But then the deal fell through anyway. The deal didn't come through at the end. Negotiating, negotiating terms. What but year is this? This was so this was 2014. For it might be 15. What did I go to? Yeah, 14. 14. Uh, so no, I went to 15, uh, 15, 15, was it? 14, 15, Pellegrini, yeah. So then, I was supposed to go to Spurs, didn't materialise, and then this, at this, at this point, eight, the agent that I was with stopped answering his phone. He stopped answering his phone? I swear, I'm, I, I kid you not. So I'm ringing him, saying, what's happening? And because we was only speaking to Spurs, because that was the best move for me, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, Still in the Premier League, good team, didn't materialise, agent, he didn't answer his, his phone to me. Because oh, he's watching now. It was too, yeah, I'll make him watch. I, Ryan, I, you know brother, what? come on, man. <laughs> Bully, you know what, now, but, but I'm still, I, 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 I hold no grudges, I still speak to him now, you know I'm what serious? I mean? Because, like, he just said he couldn't face telling me the bad news. You know what I mean? He could tell you something, he needed to grow up in a Jamaican home. <laughs> <laughs> we don't think that's an excuse. <laughs> so then his, like his partner, there's a girl called um, Eduardo Mas- uh, Mercia. He was at Liverpool. Mm. We tried to get me at Liverpool a couple of years beforehand. He went to Fiorentina. So that's where the link came. So he was saying, oh, we'll come to Fiorentina. But this is on, this is on deadline day. Like, I'm going to Italy. Like, never been Italy before. 
I heard Italy was, was racist and all this, so I mean, I mean, like, I mean, I'm at the airport thinking, should I do this, should I do this, should I go? But at this point, um, so people so get you're, twisted. You're at, wait, wait, you're at the airport even contemplating co- whether co- you should sign. hundred percent, but let's take it back just a little bit back. At this time, I've been offered a five-year deal at Man City. What? But, it, you know when they had, uh, had to have this, um, so many players, like the quota English players? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Pellegrini offered me a five-year deal. But I knew I wasn't going to play. It was based upon the quota. It it was, like, I, feel, I feel it was like okay. a realist coming back. And I thought it was based on the quota. Because of, so then they signed Sagna. So he said, if I sign Sagna, then there's no coming back. So you know what I mean? Ah, you know, like you go back, look at me. I'm not going out on the bench. I'm not signing no deal if I didn't. Biggest mistake of my life. Not like, why would you leave Man City? Biggest mistake of my life leaving Man City. Biggest. But another time. So yeah, we go to go to Fiorentina and the first day I get there it's just mad like it's just like because you're going to do your medical like I'm, I'm used to like some amazing like facilities like Florence is a beautiful town but the, the training ground was just like one pitch just one pitch <laughs> no I, I'm, I kid you not you got you got the you got the ground there yeah and you walk across and you got the training ground inside's nice lovely you know Italians are stylish but you've got one pitch. You should have told him to go Hackney Marsh. <laughs> There's nine on a bad day. But was that, no, one pitch. So like, if it's so wrong with a the pitch, then you can't, you can't train. You've got to train on the, on, on the main pitch. You don't want to ruin the main pitch. So I've done all the things and I'm, you know, I've got my head all over it. I'm, I sign a detail. I'm, I'm happy. Do you know what I mean? But then I go to the hotel room and I'm just, I'm nearly in tears thinking, what have I done? Oh. I'm nearly in tears. I, I think it's a mistake. I think it's a mistake. But then, luckily, I go to the training ground, like to train the next day. Marcos Alonso's there. Yeah, yeah you know yeah, what yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah. And he it's speaks English. Bottom boy. Na- nice guy. Um, Milan Badel was there, who, who spoke English. Salah was there. S- but Salah didn't come till the January. I don't think it was. Ah. Uh, okay. They come later anyway. Um, who else? Who else? Marco Marin. Marco Marin. Marco Marin. Wait, didn't he come in January as well, though? Uh, I can't remember when he could, but he 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 spoke English. No, he I think he left in the January. He left. I think in he, I think he came and then he left in the January because he wasn't playing. He's a baller. It, so absolutely. So baller. We, we had some ballers. We had Mario Gomez. Oh. So like our team, I'm thinking we had Matias Fernandez, uh, unbelievable player, Gonzalo, who was at I think it was Villarreal. So our team, when I, I'm, I'm thinking like, yeah, this is nice. Um, and I thoroughly enjoyed my time there. So, it's playing Montella as well. Montella was a baller. So you, Vincenzo. Yeah, but then, but then yeah, but then Salah comes and it's just like it's it's, it's amazing. I, when I when I was like, well, Chelsea have let him go. When I, when I when I seen him there, I knew he would go on to do what he did. Oh, Be- serious? I just I just knew. I was just like, how come he's not playing at Chelsea? You know what I mean? So many things in football are so circumstantial. Because for me, I just play FIFA. Yeah. So you couldn't be at the airport contemplating. <laughs> We're in the, no, no, no. Where's your signing? I've agreed the fee. He's done. But work out your, your day. I can sign you before the game's even started. I can yeah. have no right back before the game. Sign. Yeah, yeah, you're here. Yeah. But you're telling me these are the times of mental processes that you can go through even signing for a even. club. So even that wonderful picture of this and. Yeah. It could all be a lie. It can all, it can all be fake. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is Horrible. this is just this is just real Horrible. because you got so much. You know, like if you're going to sign for for Barcelona, or Real Madrid, you, you're more than happy. Come on, break away, I, come I'm, on, I'm going to Fiorentina where you know Syria wasn't what it was back in the day because Syria was one of the best leagues. Remember, we want Sancho. Oh, Lazio, that, that's you the, mad? That's what With a bullheaded brother. Exactly. Come on, my G. <laughs> my he's a BT now. I yeah, he's a BT. BT. Come yeah, on, yeah. So then when I go in there, so it started off well, started off a house on fire, finding my feet, blah de blah de blah. Pull my hamstring down. I thought like I thought I was over the injuries. I thought a fresh start, fresh mindset. Pull my hamstring. I'm like, please no, come on, man. I, 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 I don't need this. Come back and then I come back and I did all right, did all right. They weren't playing amazing. I'm still finding my feet a little bit. So it gets to like the. Well, I think it was November time, November or December time. Um, and I was just like, I need to step my game up here. You know what I mean? I was playing, but I was playing more in the Europa League games. I wasn't playing in the, but then Mancini rings me, because at this time, Mancini's gone to Inter Milan. 
and I had him obviously at City. In the phone book. So uh, yes, I'm like, so I've had a conversation with, with Mancini and I'm like, come on, come, come and get me, I'm here, do you know what I mean? <laughs> these are not, that, so these I'm, are phone calls that happen? Yeah, these are phone calls that happen. You can, he's, he's not against, I, I, I'm friends with him, do you know what I mean? So we should implement this on FIFA then? So I can just phone man in FIFA? Oh, of course just, you can, you can, yeah, you, you can phone, yeah, yeah. He's, not, he's not tapping up on one another. I'm, I'm ringing him saying, like, I'm here, do you know what I mean? I'm not playing here. And it got a little bit sour with Fiorentina because I went there uh, on loan, mm. just to the end of the season, but then they wanted to sign me in January, regardless if I was playing or not, just so they had some value in the end, if you know what I mean. So you're just an asset to them. You're not exactly, human. exactly. Oh, so, so no, just, yeah. but I was like, well, I'm not, I'm not gonna sign a deal now because at the end of the season, I'm on a free, you know what I mean? It doesn't make sense, yeah, for real. But again, one of the biggest mistakes in my life because Florence and the Florentine people, had a, I'd never experienced one bit of racism I had, that was probably, apart from the, the you know, the jubilation of the, the Premier League, probably the best year in my life. Serious? You go there, we train for an hour, sunshine every day. You, you know, you're drinking wine at two o'clock. Ooh, but, but, chat to the no, but you're drinking wine the day before games. What? You get a, we don't, red or white? Red, of course. Come red, on, red, red of course. Dog. Red wine with your chicken and your steak. Honestly, Chicken and steak. They just they just live the best possible life. And you ever. left that to go villa. Oh, yeah. She wants a man from Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> I was going back that's, home. I thought, come what's on. What's wrong with the brothers, man? What? That's what we I, never know when we got it good, you that's know. That's what I mean. We yo. never. So you got the, the Man City said, "Yo, contract." Yeah. You said, "I'm doing my thing. I need to move on." Exactly. Hard headed. You, you go to a place called Florence. Yes. It's called Florence. Yes. Flo. Firenze. Oh, red wine at 2 p.m. <laughs> Vincenzo Montella with jet black hair. Mo Salah. Yes. Before he was the Mo Salah we see now. Yes. And you went Birmingham. And I went Birmingham. I went no, from, shout out Despa. I love Birmingham. Shout out JK. Come on. I went Birmingham. But you went Villa to kick ball and you sacrificed Florence and Man City. Yeah. Where are we now as Mr. Mika Richards? So now, you know, from this like confident, you know, backing myself, like I can do anything. I'm now at a stage where I'm just like, I'm, I'm vulnerable. Like, cause you can start speaking to teams from what, from, I think from the January, you know, when you're free. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, from the January when you're free. And like, I'm gone from, well, my form's not being great. I'm still picking up injuries. My knee's getting worse. Like, and, I had two options at the time. Mm. I had, you always have the foreign options. They're always there. Mm. I had Greece, Turkey. Um, I thought you might go Turkey, Phil. I know, yeah, because not because they, 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 Turkey offered the most money. Is that what it is? They, 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 Turkey offered the most money. That's just facts. There's no like this, it's facts. Uh, but they'll send the contract like tomorrow. How much do you want? Oh, Mr. Richards, no problem. There you go, facts then, done. No problem. I read when, that too. When can, when can we get the, you know, the contract signed. When, when can you come over? When can you come, you know what I mean? Is that what they're on? They just, they just, they just love like they If they want you, they, they make you feel the most welcome. Turkey's amazing. Shout out Turkey, man. They're just um, amazing. But then I had West Ham. Ooh. And I had so Villa. Good. Tim Sherwood, I spoke to Tim Sherwood. Villa, Tim Sherwood. Yeah. And he was just brilliant. I was oh. like, I want to play for him. He's got so much confidence. Like he wanted to play out from the back because you know I used to love to burst forward and like play. I just used to love all the way he wanted to play, I wanted to play. And West Ham only offered me a two year deal, but Villa offered me a four year deal. And I knew deep in my mind, this is probably gonna be my last contract. Serious. Because Jamie. my knee was, if I would have played one game a week and been looked after, been fine. So under Sherwood, didn't have no injury problems. None. He understood. He understood what, how to get the best out of me because we had the conversation and I feel like I didn't let him down because the Villa fans all on the turn him in the end. At the start, they were saying, how's Michael Richards not in the England squad? He's playing some of the best football of his life. That was at the start, do you know what I mean? That was under Sherwood. Mm. You know, I've been realised, I've been told about years ago, my form's not been good, but that under that period, I was playing well. Some of the best football I've ever played. So you've moved to a club. Mm -hmm. um, it's your hometown. Yes. Tim Sherwood's there. Yeah. 
Got a good rapport with him now. Mm -hmm. Don't have to worry about who speaks English in the changing room. Yes. We're over that now. Yes. We're in a comfortable place. When Tim Sherwood goes, what happens? I might as well have retired then. Blood club. I might, I might as well. I might as well have retired then because um, Remy Gard came in and I, I had a lot of respect for him at the start because he was just open and honest, said he wanted to play and, and whatnot. But we had a lot of French players in the dressing room. And as soon as he come, you just see like the changing room divide. divide. Do you know what I mean? It was Wait, Remy Gard, Remy Gard. That yeah, he was at like Arsenal for a while. For a free? Yes. He scored one goal yeah. and it was in a friendly. Yeah. I watched it in July. <laughs> this is not someone that should be leading your football team. So he came and I just knew he wasn't going to get us out of the mess. Sugar. Because the players wasn't buying into what he said. So I don't know if you've seen a clip with um, Evra having a little argument with a fitness coach when he's on national team called Robert. Mm -mm. You might have seen a clip, you know, watch it, watch it after this. And with my, my new situation, I explained, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. Like, we wanted to do is like some assault course. See, like, how fit he was, was, was jumping over things and we was running for like, I don't know how many miles it was. But as I'm doing, because I was captain at the, at the time, I was like, I've got to get through it. Do you know what I mean? Of course. I said, I can't do this. I said, it's going to mess up everything that I've, I've been doing. I'm, I'm fine. So I did it. What happens? My knee starts swelling up. And from that, it was just, it just got worse and worse and worse. And I tried to tell him at the start, I tried to tell him and you know, the writing was on the wall for him because he didn't make no impact when he come because the players didn't even respect him. He, he, I won't say he turned against, but a senior players, when you come to a club, you've got to be clear in, in what you want to do so we can pass the message and we can, in, in the dressing room, get everyone to sort of apply themselves in the right way for what he wants. But the players didn't respect him from probably two weeks in. You know what Serious. I mean? Like, and I just knew it was... And then, obviously, he got, he got sacked. Di Matteo comes in. Yeah. West Ham, you know, like, because West Ham didn't do the deal. They're still in the background, you know what I mean? They're still, hey. they're still there with that two-year deal. <laughs> the money's gone down, like, though. The money, yeah, it's not what it was when they offered the first time around, but it's still Premier League football. And I knew I could only play one game a week, and they was going to stick to the, the programme for my knee. So Di Matteo comes in and was like, I, I explained the situation about my knee and I said, West Ham want me. And he says, well, I'm not letting you go. I said, what do you mean? You're, not, you're too, of a, too much of an influence in the dressing room. If I, if I lose you, then I'm going to lose the whole, the whole squad. So I said, well, am I going to be starting then? I can't play all the games, but am I going to be starting on like Saturday to Saturday? He said, no. So I said, you want me to be a cheerleader then? Is that, what you, is that what you want me to say? No, I need your experience. So on deadline day, again, the deadline day, West Ham put an offer through to, to Aston Villa. And the club, are, they're mulling over it, thinking, well, yeah, what a lot of people don't know, Aston Villa got me for free, do you know what I mean? So all it cost me is wages for that season. So they could have offloaded me. If, I was a, if that was a problem like all the Villa fans thought, they could have offloaded me, you know what I mean? Can I ask you a question? What position is that did you play then? Because Di Matteo doesn't want you to play, but wants you to be there. What position is that? He, he, he just wants me to be, I don't know, he should have, assistant manager. Oh, assistant manager. <laughs> just, I was just trying to make it clear. Yeah, it? It, he doesn't want me to play, he, doesn't, he wants me as like third choice behind Tommy Elphick and uh, Nathan Baker, I think it was at the, t at the time. So on transfer deadline day, again, Keith Wyness was the chief exec or sporting director, whatever role you want to call it. I go to, to Villa Park and I say, look, I can't play two or three games a week. If you don't let me go now, I'm not going to be able to be, be anything to you. I'm, I'm not going to be an asset to you unless you agree to play me just once a week. So we've got this offer from West Ham. Like, can I leave? And he said the exact same thing as Di Matteo. No, we, we, we can't let you go. 
So I said, you want me to just be in the change room and not play? And he pretty much just said, yes, with no word of a lie. So, I, so but then, but I'm thinking at the, the back of my head, but, but they, at these times, yes, yeah, I know you're baffled. At these times... I couldn't be a pro footballer. Exactly. I'm phoning the man them, yeah. and I'm telling them i got a situation. It's, it's <laughs> just mad. It's just, what is going on? It was just all So you've got to play professional football, but not play professional football, and everyone's got to be calm with that. Is yeah. this what you're saying to me? And the problem was, Poet, they're not really, like, Villa are not saying, oh, Mike has got an issue with his knee. He's not going to be able to play as much as we want, but we see him as an integral part of the team. So if he can get through 20, 30 games a season, we've decided to do that because he's so um, inspirational in the dressing room. Then I could, I could accept that. Do you know what I mean? I'm not going to play all the games, but I'm going to be part. But I wasn't part. Do you know what's so upsetting about that? There's, there's, I, listen, I'm not in the world of football to that degree, so I'll never know. Mm -hmm. But at least as a consumer, I can see two examples of a similar case with you, mm -hmm. where clubs have, well, tried to at least manage it correctly. I can say Koscielny at Arsenal. Yeah. They gave him at least a, a one game a week. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, he had to, he messed up a couple of times because of the injury, but it was like one game a week. I remember Ledley King at Spurs. Sometimes he didn't even train when I was working there. And he would get, when I was working there, like one game a week. Yeah. And they weren't willing to give you that, but they identified all the qualities you had outside of the pitch. But if you're that hugely influential, surely you should have played then, no? Exactly. But then I'm having to deal with this, but I don't want to come out and say, and bad, bad my villa, because at the end of the day, they still pay my, pay, my, pay my wages. You know what I mean? And it was just, it was just, I was just like, that's when, we talk about low, that's when I was like close to depression. So do you think, because me personally, I'm an advocate for speaking out, I don't know if you noticed. Um, so I just would want footballers to do that. And I've always wanted footballers to do it because I hate the fact that I need to hear Nicholas Anelka's story yeah. now. Sure. But I remember him not turning up to the PFA Awards. Mm. I remember Nicholas Anelka seeming like he was a problem, but saying, and I remember my dad saying, no, man, I'm not a problem, dog. We haven't even heard of him for say. All we hear is Arsenal and this and that. And now with social media accounts and now you being the, don't you think we should kind of gear towards you saying what you're saying now at the time so we don't deal with an issue? If we get to it straight away, that person can just concentrate on playing football. You're totally right, but when you're at a club, the way the media works is just, let's not give anything that's going to disrupt the camp. Do you know what I mean? Because if I come out and say, oh, Aston Villa treating me like I, I'm, it's a bad representation of, of the club. You know yeah, what I mean? What about, because I'm confused. In my head, this is how I'm seeing it. Mickey Richards is playing football. He's fine. Everything's cool. Then all of a sudden, a new gaffer comes in, new ideas. This is not now public knowledge. Yeah. But when you signed, everything you're going to do was public knowledge. <laughs> yeah. Now, that's all we have as consumers. Yeah. So when a new gaffer comes in with his new plans, we've not spoken about Mickey Richards. He yeah. has to accept the circumstances and whatever happens to him and his career after that, well, it doesn't matter because we've got our own problems. That doesn't sound right to me. It's not right, but that's life. I, it, that, that's the, it, like because footballers earn so much money. Yeah. Like, they have no right to say anything. That's the way it's perceived. <laughs> Do you know? What? Uh, honestly, honestly. So you, when you have money, you can't talk. Look you at, have to just be happy you've got money. Look at look at Pogba. Like he gets absolutely so abused it. on like he's like he's some sort of devil or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, if, if you don't like his dancing, we don't have to like dancing. You, can, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, he's a human being. If you don't, if you don't like him, get rid of him. Do you know what I mean? Don't, it's just like, God knows what he was going through, like, mentally. Do you know what I mean? But he can't come out and say anything because he's, then he's just going to make himself more of a, a target. And you know what's so sad? The club can come out and say something. The chairman can come out and say something. The agent can come out and say something. Everyone can talk apart from the person in question. Um, and this is fair. It brings me to my final thing anyway, because now you can talk. <laughs> and one man you talk to a lot. Mm. You see the relationship you two have. Mm. I just love it. It's just what I want to see on TV. Just people being people. They might get things wrong, they might get things right, but guess what? That's life, right? How is it with Roy Keane? Because for me, it's, it looks like a hell of a lot of fun. It's brought life to Sky Sports. R R Roy Keane is honestly probably one of the nicest people I've ever met. Oh, wow. He is 
Like, you know, like sometimes, you know, you go. You, you want, say the nicest? The nicest. Exactly, the nicest. Like, you was know. Was going to beat up cleverly? <laughs> <laughs> and Tom looks like a nice guy. <laughs> I don't know, but, well, to me, he's the nicest. Okay. But, like, you know, like, I'm, when I first was on, on studio, when I was in the, in the studio with him, like, I'm just in awe, you know, like, don't think because, oh, Man City is Man United. No. I'm thinking, like, I'm just like, you know, I'm, I'm there with uh, G Neville, I've played with Carragher, I've played with, so obviously the, the legends of the game. But then you got Sunes, you got Keen. Like, I'm just like in awe of these guys, you know what I mean? So, yeah. like, what I try to do on set, I can never compete with, with Roy Keane, his name, what he's won, the play he wasn't looking at. But what I can do is, is bring out a side that a lot of people don't see. You know what I mean? Ian Wright gets it sometimes. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's, what, that's what I try to do. And that's why it's like this media stuff, like, I'm a happy person. You know what I mean? And I just, I love working with him because he's just so sharp. He loves football. He's just, everything he says is believe, and everything he says is believes, that's not put on. You know, like when he's saying he's, you know, like, know. he's not playing up to the camera. That's like totally him. He's too old to do that now. Right? <laughs> he's in his conditions. <laughs> this is who he is, man. But like working with him, like I, I've never worked with someone who, who just understands like what what I need as well on on air. Like Jamar Chapman, incredible. Like like I, I wouldn't have been doing the media stuff if it wasn't for him oh, because wow. he was like you know like he don't get the plaudits that he deserves. Like he knows so much about sport and, and whatnot. Got to work with some big name. Kelly Cates is incredible. Gary Lineker, oh, um, God. Um, unbelievable. Gary Lineker. Dan Walker, but Chap Chappers was the first one. Dave Jones as well at Sky. De Chappers was the first one who really brought me in to be able right. to say, well, you know, talk about people giving you a chance. Like Chappers was the Stuart Pierce. He's the one ah. who believed in me first. Because a lot of people, I did a lot of radio. You know what I'm talking about, do radio. I did a lot of radio before I was even on the, the camera. You know what I mean? So that- He's done the groundwork. Yeah, yeah, so he enabled me to just like, not take things as serious as, as everyone. And he said like, if that's you, be unique to you. You know what I mean? Come on. So then when I get on the screen, he said, when you get on the screen, then don't change. You know what I mean? There's no point in me. How can I go have an argument with Roy Keane about opinions when he's won, what, seven league titles? Do you know what I mean? To my measly one league title. Obviously, it's a great, um, it's a great thing to have under your belt, but I try to, I won't say unsettle him, but try and make it entertaining for the people to watch rather than just shouting and, and bawling. Like, I'm, I just come out of the game, so it's different for me. Like, a lot of these players I'm talking about, I've played with, or some of my friends, so I can't, I can't like be speaking negatively about them. You know, I try to give things from from their point of view because I've just come out of the changing room. You know what I mean? I think that's important, though. We it's, need a different perspective, and, and I, I think that's good. And I think that the, the new breed of, of players is completely different to the old. Mm. They're a lot more sensitive. You know, like the the read social media a lot more. You know what? Imagine having a bad game and going on Twitter. I see like 100,000 tweets about players, you know what I mean? Mm. And you know as a player, like he shouldn't, he shouldn't, but you know you do, you always have a little look at what people are saying about me. Good or bad, you know what I mean? Mm. Like, them older players though, one thing I've noticed about them, they're from a generation where they were idolized too much. Yeah, yeah. And this generation here, we don't care. If you're cool like Mika Richards, yeah. we'll have love for you. Yeah. Because you've won seven league titles, doesn't make you a nice person. It just means you was part of a really successful football team, Graham Sunes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. we don't really care. And I think Alan Hansen was the first person to receive that type of the new age doesn't care. Yeah. When he came out and said, kids can't win the league. Mm -hmm. Alex Ferguson said, I don't care, Man United. I think the type of personality you are on television is exactly what we need. Yeah, I, I think I've just got to be, be, be careful because like, as, as, a, as a pundit, I don't just want to be the, the laughy jokey because I, I, I'm not knowledgeable about football, you know what I mean? I take this football thing real serious, yeah. but I try to get my personality out there as well. Yeah. Whereas some people, it's too much personality and they're like, well, what he's saying has got no real substance, do you know what I mean? So it, for me, it's just finding that, that balance. And that's why I love it with Roy because like, we know what Roy's gonna oh, say he was rubbish or what's he doing there. But if I can be a bit more light-hearted, but then try explain it in a different way, 
I think that's why it works, you know what I mean? I, Who's a guy called Chapman? Uh, Mark Chapman. Reminds me of Tigo. Is that basically, Tigo's so lit because he just knows what the best qualities of you are. Yes. So he knows how to produce you, yes. he knows what environment to put you in, he knows who to have there, he knows it so well, he can say this is going to be a great episode. Before, like even way before, because he's done it for so long, and I think that sounds like Chapman. He just knows how it to just, produce a exact, situation exactly. to get the best results for everybody. And I think, yeah, that sounds, that sounds quite lit, I can't lie. So this is the new exciting chapter for Mika Richards. How long do you see yourself even doing this? You know what, it's, it's mad, because I've got, I'm working with BBC, Sky, CBS, uh, You're a whole fan, And, you? and then the, the, I've, got, I've got my article on the Mail Online, so, what? you know, it, it's, and I'm not using it, I've come in at a good time because yeah. the whole, not just a Black Lives Matter thing, but, you know, people are getting chances mm -hmm. that wouldn't have been there before, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So whether I'm getting more chances because of that, who cares? I don't care. I'm just going to make sure when I'm on there, I'm performing. You yeah. know what I mean? That's the most important. Yeah. You know, because there's a lot of people, a lot of white people in the past have got chances just because, you know what I mean? So if I'm getting more chances now because I'm black, well, I'll, I'll take them. Do you know what I mean? That's I'll... a good place to end me coming. <laughs> that is the truth. Look, first of all, bro, thank you so much for coming down. You're a player, like I said, down to you downstairs. You're one of the few players that I've seen from the start and the end. So it's always nice to talk to someone like that because you have more knowledge of their career rather than someone like Graham Sooner. <laughs> I know. I didn't see at the start. <laughs> Mika, one love fam, everyone. What camera are I looking into? That one. Look, like, share, subscribe. I don't say that because I'm here. I say it because Mika's here. Mika's bare cool. If it was down to me, you probably wouldn't. God bless you all. Drink water. It's safe. And send us money because right now we can't afford cucumbers. <laughs>